Welcome back to the Suresh podcast. In the previous chapter, we heard how the messengers came back to Dinli to deliver the fierce message that Guru Hargobind had for Chandu. Now, in chapter forty-eight, it begins describing how Chandu heard these words from his messengers, heard the nature of Guru Hargobind, how he was raising an army, how fearless and determined he was. And now Chandu was extremely scared. He was panicking. He was trying to think of different ways he could resolve this issue. He was thinking that, well, Guru Hargobind won't accept the marriage of my daughter, and he won't be afraid uh, with any threats that I may give him. This conflict has just grown and grown out of control. He still doesn't recognize my anger. Well, now, either I will die or he will die. Until I capture Hargobind, my dispute with the Guru's house won't be finished. I'll spend however much money in my attempt to capture him. And in this way, Chandu was thinking about the ways in which he would entrap Guru Hargobind. But he was distraught with anxiety day and night. He would come to the court of Emperor Jahangir daily, always looking for an opportunity to talk to him. For many days, he was unable to get. That one-on-one time with Jahangir, but one day he found the right moment, and he had some time alone with the emperor. He clasped his hands together and he made a request to speak to the emperor. They began speaking about the accounts for the Maja region, and Chandu said, "Remember Guru Arjan, who you had called to see in Lahore? Well, he has now passed, and now his son sits on the seat of Guru Nanak's house." Jahangir heard this and he replied, "When did Guru Arjan pass away? When I met him not so long ago, he was well. When did he pass after that? Guru Arjan was the very form of peacefulness and renunciation. He spoke so sweetly when we met. It rose great love in my heart for the divine. It made me focus deeper on God, and gave me an inkling to renounce the world." Listening to this praise that Jahangir was laying on Guru Arjan, Chandu was just fuming. So he started to make up all these lies now, and he said, "Listen, Emperor, when Guru Arjan met you there in Lahore, well, he passed a few days after that. He had cholera, and he suffered greatly. He went to the river Ravi, and that's where he passed away. The Sikh congregation of Lahore then immersed his body into the river. His son Hargobind." Who was very young, he now sits on the seat of Guru Nanak's house. And recently, news came to Lahore, which found its way to me about this young man's disposition and behavior. When I heard about it, I was in shock. He started all these new traditions. He calls the seat the gaddi of Guru Nanak. He calls it a takat, a throne. And he has a great interest in learning the science of warfare. He's abandoned the traditions of the fakirs, the saints. And has started wearing all sorts of fancy clothes. I think he wants to be your equal. He's raising an army, and day by day, this army of diverse soldiers is getting bigger and bigger. He calls himself Badsha, an emperor, and he's taken up royal traditions like hunting daily in the forest. He has kept tadis, bards, who sing to his soldiers daily about very. Valorous and brave warriors of olden days, which inspires his troops greatly. He doesn't even have any land, yet he is keeping such a large force. We should be careful that he doesn't start a big mess, an uprising. Think about it. How will such a large force, an army, just remain still without fighting? We can either send our forces in to squash them, nip it in the bud, or we send some very wise ministers. And call him to have your presence here in Delhi, and he won't just stay there. He's going to cause a big problem from Amritsar. So we should act on it sooner rather than later. But as always, you may do as you wish, Emperor. So Chandu said this, and then many other ministers, who Chandu had bribed earlier, and they started voicing their support for his suggestion. They weren't thinking about what was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. They were just blinded by the money given by Chandu. So Jahangir just accepted what his ministers had said. He was thinking that the seat of the Guru's house was 
extremely powerful, full of virtue, and that his ancestors had un understood this, the emperors before him, and they had served the Guru's house. But now, in his mind, he was wavering. He was after hearing these complaints from this vile person, Jandu. So Jahangir had initially heard slander that the Guru's house was keeping thieves who would rob and terrorize citizens, but Jahangir was never really able to prove this as Guru Arjan had now passed away. But now his son sits on the throne and he didn't want to start a dispute if there didn't need to be one. So Jahangir remained in thought for some time. He didn't give any command. He got up from his court and he went home for the day. The next day, the emperor was still thinking about this. It was bugging him when Wazir Khan, a very high-ranking member, minister of the emperor, emperor and a devoted Sikh when he walked into the court. We've spoken about Vizir Khan before on the podcast. He was a Sikh from Guru Arjan Dev Ji's time. Although he served in the Mughal Empire, he was always supporting the Guru's cause. And at every turn, he tried to sway the emperor to make the right decision. So when Vizir Khan entered into the court, Jahangir then asked him, said Vizir Khan, Guru Arjan was such a saintly and determined figure. I didn't hear that he had passed away, and I had just seen him in Lahore. My minister Chandu was speaking very ill of him, but even listening to that, I didn't use force against Guru Arjan Dev Ji. And now I hear of Guru Arjan's son from Chandu, who was telling me that, you know, he's keeping an army, he himself has adorned weapons, and is wanting to cause a, a conflict in the region. Chandu told me all of this. So, should I send my force there or should I not? Maybe we could send a very diplomatic person there who can persuade the young Guru to come meet me here. If he doesn't want to start a conflict, then he should come here to Delhi and meet me. And if he doesn't agree to this and has other thoughts, well, then we will send a force. So, Jahangir had said this to uh, the ministers there, Vizid Khan was there, there was another minister there in the court at the time, his name was Kinch Beg. So both of them clasped their hands together, but Vizid Khan replied saying, Guru Arjan was a benevolent soul. He spent countless amounts of money to build the Amritsar Sarovar, which gr gives great happiness to Hindus and Toruks alike without discrimination. When he wanted to build a second Sarovar, some ministers had started to cause him some trouble. And every day he serves countless people with his communal kitchen and at every second he remembers Allah. Some people slandered him saying he kept thieves, but no one with any good intellect would say or even believe such a lie. Chandu may know of Guru Arjan but doesn't recognize the Guru's greatness. Guru Arjan did in fact pass away in Lahore but that is in the past, what can we do about that now? But we should look now to his son, Guru Hargobind, who was a great warrior. But he's still very young. He sits on the seat of Guru Nanak and gives great bliss to his servants. The entire world respects and worships him. And the Guru blesses all his servants with whatever they want. Jandu is also really jealous of him as well. And like before, he is slandering the Guru's house. You are the emperor of the entire world. You want the best for everyone. Keeping them safe and sound, you yourself will be kept safe and sound. The entire world praises you, and they wish for your best as well, as do we. So you should want the best for Guru Arjun's son as well. So you should send some fine, really sweet minister, have them talk really softly, request the Guru that they should come meet you in here in Delhi. We must be aware that when we had called his father to come Lahore, however it happened, he had passed away a few days after that. So we have to be careful now with Guru Hargobin to make sure that he does not curse us. Whatever they say, whatever the Guru says, comes true. But you know this all too well. So Jahangir heard that from Vizir Khan and praised him greatly for it. He said, Oh Vizir Khan, you are so wise. Everyone else in the court just says what Chandu says, but you are extremely smart. So I'm going to send you to Amritsar. So think the best way to bring Guru Hargobind. Make sure that he's happy and he comes in peace. 
so he may bless us with his pure sight. There would be nothing greater than this. It would be terrible if he came in anger and said something strong against us. We don't want him to start any type of uprising or conflict, but yet we want to speak with him so that these doubts in my mind can be resolved. Meeting with a pure peer, a saint, enables one to focus on Khuda, the divine, and that time is auspicious and blessed. This is why it would be so great to meet the young Guru Hargobind. So I really love your plan. So go tomorrow early in the morning, take Kinch Bag with you, and take along many valuable offerings for the Guru, please him greatly, and then bring him here so we may meet. Wazir Khan heard this, he was extremely happy, knowing that he too now will be able to meet young Guru Hargoban. So Wazir Khan then bowed down to Jahangir, collected his things, and then left the court. Wazir Khan had collected a few things as an offering for the Guru, a kalgi, a plume, a jiga, a tiara, a pearl necklace, a very fine um, silk clothing that was embroidered with silver and gold, many more offerings as well. So Vizir Khan assembled a select few guards to take with him and they got ready and they head out. So early in the next morning they left Delhi for Amritsar and saw many good signs along the way, auspicious signs. So he was extremely happy knowing that he would soon meet Guru Hargobind. So the group traveled slowly and slowly but eventually they reached Amritsar. And that's how chapter 48 concludes. In the next chapter, we'll hear the discussion between Wazir Khan and Guru Hargobind. The discussion within the Guru's house about whether it would be wise or not to head to Delhi to meet with Jahangir. So that's where we'll pick up next time. But as always, we would like to thank those who are supporting the podcast through the Mangala Chayan Patreon page. <laughs> Guru